Hey you guys, it's Chris, and I'm back. Of course I'm back. I ain't going anywhere. Beast, I'm YouTube famous now. I'm every woman, it's all in me. Anything you want done, baby, I'll do it naturally. Sorry, I don't have a regular fan like Peter does, so I, I use this. is up everybody this is chris from the rewired soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and if you're new to my channel my channel is all about helping you out with your mental health and i also talk about addiction recovery and things like that so if you're into that kind of stuff make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell but before i get started on peter mon and his dry drunk tweets i got a little bone to pick with mr peter mon i have a resentment if you will step four Column one, Peter Mon. That was a little 12 step humor for all of you who don't know. All right, so this guy, Peter Mon. Peter Mon comes to my city, the city of Las Vegas. He is in my town, and this guy doesn't even meet up with me. He doesn't even invite me to the Chinese buffet. And not only that, not only that, but this guy, while he was here, he met up with none other than my girlfriend's favorite YouTuber, Shane Dawson himself. Just look at this picture. Look at this picture. That is a beautiful picture, but do you know how much better it would look with me in it? Right? That's what I thought. No, but <laughs> all kidding aside, Peter was in town and he was celebrating his anniversary with his lovely husband and I'm glad that they had a good time. And Peter is a man in long-term recovery, so the fact that you made it to Las Vegas, stayed here, didn't drink or use, kudos to you, good sir. Kudos to you. But I know our paths will cross again sometime in the future. But anyways, let me jump into this video. And it's actually kind of funny. Like, let's get into this video. I'm doing it in the, uh, the whole Peter Mon fashion where it takes literally forever just to get to the video. <laughs> but anyway, so for those of you who don't know who Peter Mon is, Peter Mon has a drama channel on YouTube. This guy actually has four channels and he uploads daily. That is bananas. This dude hustles. Like when I hear people talking about YouTube burnout, I'm like, yo, you need to go check out this dude, Peter Mon, because this guy is hustling. But anyways, he has a drama channel, and I actually follow it for some of the stuff that I upload and get some information from Peter. But anyways, he talks about YouTubers. He's been talking a lot about the makeup community, especially with what's been going on lately. But in all of this, people started looking up Peter Mon's old tweets, and they found a lot of stuff going on in his past, back in like, 2012 or 11 or something like that. And Peter, you know, he he has been covering this with other uh, beauty gurus and things like that. And like, it was interesting because Peter, he always talks about remaining teachable and stuff like that. And it's interesting because I think it's going to be interesting seeing his perspective on things now that he was on the other side of it, um, because he always talks about remaining teachable. And what's interesting is, I remember telling my girlfriend a while back, like, I think this guy's in recovery. I think he's in recovery. Like, those of us who are in recovery, like we have certain lingo and we kinda, we kinda spot it, but through watching some of Peter's other videos and then talking to him uh, a little bit on Twitter, I'm like, yep, this guy's in recovery. And he has over 20 years clean and sober. He's a great guy and I look up to him and his recovery. But anyways, people dug up his old tweets, he made an apology video, and what I really respect about him is that he did an apology the way you're supposed to do an apology, like, and I, I often say like, more people need to work some kind of program because they need to learn how to apologize, and Peter did it great, and then basically what I respect even more is he came back with another video, he said, listen, I'm not addressing it anymore, I'm gonna go back to doing what I love, which is making videos. But anyways, he has a second channel called Peterisms where he talked about being a dry drunk and the mind frame uh, of what he was doing like back then when he sent out those tweets that have been getting him some backlash. And I think it's important, first of all, to, to look at the difference between between an excuse and a reason, right? Like Peter was just giving reasons for it. He wasn't trying to justify it. He wasn't trying to get pity or anything like that. But I think it's great, like, because we need to have some empathy and understand what was going through that person's mind at that time. But anyways, Peter, um, you know, I, I'm sorry for his losses. He, at that time, he was dealing with the death of his mom, amongst other tragedies going on in his life, and he was part of a 12-step fellowship. And what he did, he lost all faith in the program and everything like that, his spirituality, a higher power, and he got angry, 
right? And he disconnected from the program and he did this for four years. Like that's bananas. Like most people who step away like that, especially after tragedy, they go right back to the bottle or drugs or whatever it is. So kudos to Peter for staying clean throughout that. Like I have gone through my own periods of being a dry drunk and Thankfully, I didn't pick up a drink or a drug. That was the only thing I did right. But anyways, what's a dry drunk anyways? So for those of you who, who aren't in the know, like make sure you learn from this. Like this is a term that we use. So if you're somebody in recovery or somebody thinking about getting in recovery, or most of all, if you know somebody who is sober or trying to get sober, dry drunk is basically this. Like it's somebody who is just abstaining from alcohol or drugs, but they're, either, they're like still miserable. They're still not a great person. They're what we call restless, irritable, and discontent. Maybe they have anger issues and frustrations and all sorts of things. And it's because they don't have any type of program. And it's brutal. Like, I can't explain, okay? Like, when I got clean and sober six years ago, when I got into a 12-step program, I started working with a sponsor and I worked my first step. Like, for me, my experience with, with it was, this was a two-part step. Okay, so in AA, the first step is we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable, right? In NA, same thing. It's just we admitted we were powerless over our addiction and that our lives had become unmanageable, right? So in the first part of that step, we're admitting this, okay? I'm a drug addict. I'm an alcoholic. Cool. But for me, the second part was the most important part. What it taught me was if you take the drugs and alcohol away from me, I'm a very screwed up person. If nothing else, I'm even more screwed up without drugs or alcohol. Like this is something a lot of family members don't understand. Hell, it's something a lot of addicts don't understand when they first get clean and sober. A lot of people have this misconception that you take the drugs or alcohol away and now they're gonna be this perfect angel. They're gonna be kind, considerate, and compassionate and honest and all these other things. But no, no, like when when they took the drugs and alcohol away from me, I was uh, I was an insane person. I was angry, I was yelling at everybody, I was fighting with everybody. It was complete madness. So like what I learned in that first step was, oh wow, I need to keep working more steps because I am a messed up person. See, alcohol and drugs are only a symptom of our problem, right? There's a lot more going on. We turn to those substances as a solution for dealing with life. So part of this whole journey is learning how to deal with life in a better way, how to deal with our relationships in a better way. And like, listen very carefully. Like, I am not here to preach 12-step programs to anybody. Like, I often tell people who are new, to sobriety, I, I, I tell them this, I do not care what program you work, just work a program. I don't care if it's a 12 step program, I don't care if it's an alternative to 12 step programs, I don't care if it's meditation, I don't care if it's through support groups, I don't care if it's just getting your butt into therapy, but you got to do something, okay? Like it breaks my heart, because I know people who are in sobriety, they've been clean or sober for a long time and they're still miserable. Like part of my story is when I got clean and I was meeting these dry drunks in meetings, like I made a deal with myself. I'm like, if I am ever that miserable, I'm just gonna drink or use. Like that's just me. Like I am not going to live this life unless it is amazing, unless I am happy, unless I am sane. So if they can do it, good for them. But it breaks my heart seeing how many people do this dry drunk thing for years. Like I have a friend who calls me regularly and he's he, and he's just constantly irritated or angry and dealing with all these issues. And I'm like, man, there's a step for that. Like you gotta remember, pain is inevitable and suffering is optional. So many times our resistance to things is causing our own suffering, okay? Like, here's the thing, like things are gonna happen. I'm gonna get angry, I'm gonna get upset, I'm gonna, all these other things, but it's my choice whether or not I want to go out and get the tools I need to live this happy, free, sane life. Like I am always, not always, I am most of the time in a good mood, but anyways, Peter did this for four years until he finally got to his breaking point and went back into the rooms and now he's doing great again. And that was the reason behind those tweets. There's a quote from uh, the literature from Narcotics Anonymous and I always misquote it, but it says, when the pain of staying the same becomes too great, we finally let go and become willing to change. And that's what it was for Peter. The pain that he was going through finally got so great that he finally went back and got into the 
the solution. But anyways, I love Peter to death. He is a great guy. Like, please, if you like my channel, if you like my content, do yourself a favor and go subscribe to his Peterisms channel. I will link it down in the description below. I, if you're into more YouTube drama and stuff, I love his channel because he, he has the same message as I do. Like when we talk about these things, we're trying to teach people lessons. Like he's very kind and compassionate. When he makes these videos, he's not looking to drag anybody or you know just spill the tea all over the place. Like he tries to have a very empathetic point of view and he offers suggestions and advice and things like that. But anyways, he uploads on the daily. So I'll provide links to both of those channels, his Peter Mon main channel and his Peterisms channel. But if you need some like daily inspiration, some daily wisdom, make sure you're checking out his Peterisms channel. He has four channels right now. He's starting a fifth one. And I, yours truly, am actually going to be a guest on his new channel that I believe he's starting next month. I need to send him a video. But anyways, I wanna hear your comments down below. Did you know what a dry drunk was? Do you know anybody who is a dry drunk? Were you a dry drunk? Let's have a conversation down below in the comments, all right? But that's all I got for you. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'm always making videos just to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you want to get yourself some sweet Rewired Soul merch, you can click or tap on that shop icon right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. Don't be a dry drunk today and I'll see you next time.